Introducing the Seiko Tuna SNE577, 5,000 units. This one, more realistic of a number for a limited edition Seiko. We had the Samurai at 8,000 and the Monster at 7,000. You can see them in the background on each corner of the screen. So Seiko thinking this one not as popular, which makes no sense because the Tuna is one of the most iconic Seiko's 1975, 20 patents filed, first L gasket, etc., etc. This thing is a legend and an icon and an honor to wear. And this one is a little bit different. The size is smaller than the mainstay tuna just by a hair. And it's definitely something to consider. If you can't wear a tuna, this one definitely gonna do it for you. We got 46.6 in diameter. That's including that plastic shroud. It feels textured, it feels grainy. It could almost be like a ceramic, but it's not. It is plastic, but it's well done and it can trick you. And we have a thickness of 11.4, which is insanity, ultra thin, and a lug to lug 45.7, almost a perfect square, about a mil under, so a bit shorter. And of course we do have, unfortunately, hard legs on this one. Now, if you were interested in purchasing this tuna, definitely check out the link below for Kavar Jewelers. They are my AD of choice. They're excellent. If you have any questions about the watch or purchasing process, email me in the description below and I will answer you. The crown is a healthy 6.9 mils and it's easy to operate with that coin edge grip. Also, the secret measurement on this watch, 39.7. So about a mil smaller than the normal tuna, the 300 mil hermetically sealed pro diver. Now this one is still a pro diver, 200 meters, ISO wet tested. Seiko sends them out, gets them certified. We do have 22 mil straps going down to 19. Now this one is so cool. I'm so excited. This one is number 10 out of the 5,000. I think that's the lowest we've ever had out of all the limited editions. So very cool. Clean number, number 10. Now the bezel is stainless steel with that black hard coating and it has thick scallops cut out. RX style, easy to grip a little bit less clackety than the other two black series, a little bit more dampened, more of a traditional Seiko feel here, just by a hair, but it's very nice to operate. This one, my favorite bezel out of the three black series, everything lines up perfect. This one actually has loom up to 20. Now I think there is a coating on top of here. These are based on the Street Series chassis. Street Series has a 3D textured aluminum insert. So I think this one is the same filled with loom, and then there's a coating to make it smooth. Because if you try to dig your fingernail, you can't, it's completely smooth. I don't know what the top coating is. It might be that black titanium carbon that Seiko likes to use a lot. They're very mysterious about their materials and they seem to change it up a lot. So interested to know how this will patina, how it will scratch. Any owners watching this for some reason in the future, let me know down in the comments, please add value to the video, would really appreciate it. Now the dial and hands, beautiful tuna style hands with an orange minahan, amazing, and white tipped seconds hand. It hits the marks most of the time, but it doesn't have compensation for gravity. So yeah, it's hitting the marks right now. So in different angles, it might not hit. Some high end courts, like some Grand Seikos, will compensate for gravity and position and always hit the mark, but this one, it's not a high-end quartz. V157 with 15 seconds plus minus of accuracy per month. 10 month 
life on the battery if it doesn't see sunlight, but it is fully solar. So that's never going to happen. It's going to see the sun. It has a quick start feature. So if it was dead, it will jump back to life the second it sees light. And it does have overcharge protection. Now the price, this one, you can get it. I only have the Canadian price. It's going to translate roughly to 550 USD. Let's compare it next to the SKX. So the SKX actually has a bigger bezel and it's going to look almost the same on wrist. I think this will wear even smaller than an SKX because the lug to lug is 45.7. I think the SKX is 46 if memory serves me. But look at the width right there. Look at the difference. Now the tuna is a lot slimmer, 11.4. And there you can see the lug to lug very close. These two are so similar. Let's check it out on my wrist. Here it is on my six and a half inch wrist and it looks the business. It looks beautiful. Yup, man, this dark tuna is amazing. Ultra slim, yup, oh man. So six and a half inch wrist, this fits perfect. With the 39.7 secret measurement, 46.6 on that shroud. Yeah, this is the perfect size for six and a half inch wrist. It might look a tad large on camera. In person, it's perfect. It has tons of presence and this thing is gorgeous. What a beauty. Good job, Seiko. So this being quartz and having the plastic shroud, I'm expecting ultra lightweight. And yes, under 197 grams. Amazing. And while it was on my wrist, it did feel ultra comfortable. Okay, there you can see the loom. It is a tuna, so it is amazing. And yes, look at that bezel. The whole loom pip at 12, the triangle is illuminated. So I do think it is that aluminum 3D insert and it is filled with loom. Here it is in the low light situation, legibility, perfect. Beautiful, creamy hour indices. And that orange Minahan is special. You know what? Holding a tuna is special. It has meaning. It has so much history. And although this is not the full fledged tuna, it's from the original company. It has the tuna DNA and it's still a fantastic everyday tough sports watch. I wish it was Sapphire. If this was Sapphire, I would probably buy it. I want to let you guys know that we do have a new merch store. Check it out. You can get a shirt that says you can get a Swiss watch for that price. I'm working on a new water bottle. So this one will disappear soon once my own custom one comes. And uh, yeah, so please support the channel by watching this video here and this video here. And I'll see you in the next one. Man, this is gorgeous.